everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure to check out my Instagram listed down below. I post lots of fun videos, tips and tricks over there, so be sure to give me a follow. In today's video, we are going to be working with Tech Rep Reflective Vinyl. This is such a cool product. It comes in a bunch of great colors. And we're going to make a mailbox sign for this, but there's a lot that you can do with this. Now, obviously, this is not on my mailbox just yet. We are going to show you how to apply this to your mailbox, and I will show you with it both during the day and at night so you can see how reflective it is. But I wanted to be able to show you the decal design that we were going to be working with before we get started. I'll also show you guys how to make a test cut so that you can make sure you're going to cut the vinyl on the correct setting because everybody's machines and all vinyl is so different that it's really important to do a test cut, especially working with a new product. Now, I'm so excited to get started with this Tech Rep vinyl, and don't forget that you can save 10% by using code CORINNE10 at their website listed down below. Definitely do not forget to save that 10%. You can also shop through their LA warehouse and you get free shipping at $39. That way you can make sure that you get a little bit lower of a threshold for the free shipping and they do sell the reflective vinyl. So just when you go to their website, make sure you choose LA warehouse. So let's get started. We're going to make a really cool mailbox decal. Whatever we would do, we do it just for we're going to be decorating a mailbox. So what we're going to use is reflective vinyl and then this really pretty design. I just thought this would be fun and super easy because all we have to do is download it and then change the last name and it's ready to go. So what we're going to do is click download and it's going to open up a folder asking us where we would like to save our design. So what I'm going to do is go into my Cricut folder and kind of figure out where I want to put it. I don't really have anywhere that's like necessarily exactly what this is. So I think I'm going to call it a monogram and a frame because that's kind of what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now we do need to unzip our folder. So go ahead and open the folder. And what you want to do is click extract all and then click extract. That's going to open up a second folder, which will have your extracted images in it. Now let's head over to design space so I can show you how to upload this. Here in Design Space, what you'll do is click Upload, which is the very last button on the left, and then click Upload Image. Now, you can either browse for the image or just keep your folder open and simply do a drag and drop, which is what I personally like to do. So I'm going to grab the one that shows us a Microsoft Edge document. That is my SVG. Click on it, hold it, and drag it over onto my Cricut screen. Now you'll see that you have your little frame, and we can just click Upload. Now the font doesn't come with this, but that's okay. We can use our own font. Go ahead and select your image and add it to the canvas. Now you'll see that you have your entire image. So I'm going to do it about 11.4 inches wide. That'll just make it as big as we can cut on a 12 by 12 mat. We can actually go 11.5, but it's fine. Now what we'll need to do is select our font that we want to use for our last name. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up a text box and input the last name that we're going to use here. So we'll just use my last name. Now it is a little hard to see because it's on top of our frame. So I'm just going to move our frame over. Now we can use whatever we want. We can have this all capital letters. Really it's up to you and how you want it to look. But I think I'm going to do all capital. And I think I don't want to do a script font. I would like this to be pretty easy to read. Now I'm going to go into my system fonts and find something that I like that I think will look good. I do want it to be relatively easy to read and fairly thick just so that it looks good in the frame. Like this one's a pretty big one and I don't think I hate it. So I'm gonna size it down a little bit and we'll just sort of figure out about how big we need to make it to fit in our frame. But I think that's a pretty good size. Now I do want my name to be fairly large. I want it to be able to be red, but I also don't want it to touch the lines because we are gonna make this a different color. Now we just need to add the letter B to the middle here. So what you do is grab your text box and the new text box is a little bit finicky sometimes so you might need to play with it. So once I've added that, I'm gonna go ahead and just get this sized to go into our circle. And again, you want it pretty big but you don't want it to touch the edges of the circle. You just want it to be as big as you can make it. Now we're going to be using reflective vinyl from TechRap for this and it comes in a ton of great colors. So we need to pick out whatever two colors we want to use and you can use whatever colors you want to. 
I think what I want to do is the green and the pink. I just think they'll look really fun. So what I'm going to do is just play around with this a little bit, changing the colors just to see which one I like. Now, they don't really have neon colors available here in Design Space. So if you want to make your own color, go into advanced right here, click this little plus, and it'll open up a, another option for your colors. So what you can do is kind of scroll over into your little color thing and find the green that's close or at least somewhat close to matching the color that you're going to use. Then just click away from it and you'll have that color. Then we can do the same for the pink because again, they don't really have a neon pink. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll over into the pink area and find something that's kind of neon-y. Our pink's a little more on the orangey side of the pinks, so we aren't probably going to get an exact color, but that's pretty close. You can also, if you know your um, hex code for your color, you can input that down here as well. So that's an option too if you happen to know a hex code. So if you have specific colors you use for branding or something like that, you can definitely take a look at that. I think that looks really cute, super fun. It's gonna be bright and colorful just the way I want it. So what we'll do now is just click make it and I'm gonna show you what the mats look like. You'll see here we have our neon green mat with our outline, so our little frame, and then over here we have the black stone and the bee. Now I'm gonna flip these because for me it makes more sense to have the black stone cut at the top, taking away most of the top edge for the vinyl and then have the B cut under it because then I can just cut and have a cleaner looking piece of vinyl left over. So I think that looks pretty good. Again, you can edit your mats. You can move stuff around on them if you want to. So if you wanted to cut it over here, it's really up to you and how you want to kind of arrange your products on your mat. But I'm going to do some test cuts. So I know for sure we're going to definitely have some test cuts done on these. I'm just going to cut off a chunk of the vinyl and we're gonna go ahead and try it. So let's say that we wanna do a test cut. All I'm gonna do is hit cancel. Then I'm going to hide my images, but first I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So click save, and I'm gonna save this as mailbox, and that way I can find it. If anything goes wrong, it'll be completely saved. We won't have to redesign our item. I'm gonna hide our design over here in the layers tab by clicking on the little eyeballs. Then I'm going to open up a shape and I like to use a star. I think that works really well for test cuts. And I usually make my star about an inch big. That way it's pretty small, but still not tiny. And then all I want to do is click make it. Now, typically with the tech wrap vinyl, I like to do a test cut just because I do find that they cut a little bit differently than normal vinyl. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this on the vinyl setting first and we'll see how it does. If that doesn't work, we'll try another setting. I didn't really think that you guys needed to see me cut the star, but it cut fine on the vinyl setting, so that's the setting we're gonna use. So we'll go ahead and delete the star, we don't need it anymore, and then bring up our image again by clicking the eyeballs, and then click make it. Now again, we'll adjust the mat so that the pink is all together the way we want it to be, and then we're gonna be ready to cut. So again, I'm just gonna kinda move this around, get my B where I want it. I think I'm actually gonna put it over here. Oop, a little too close and we're good to go. So go ahead and make sure that you have your first mat selected. Click continue and we're going to cut this on the vinyl setting. Like I said, that worked just fine. So that's what we're going to go ahead and use for the tech wrap uh, reflective vinyl. We are ready to start with our reflective vinyl. This stuff is really, really cool looking. So what I'm going to do is place the green on to my mat. And we're just going to place this color side up. This is just like regular adhesive vinyl. You just place it color side up. Now this one doesn't have a protective clear coating to it. Some of the tech wrap does. So you want to make sure that you check that. But this does not have that protective coating. We'll go ahead and load this in. Go ahead and start the cut. I just leave it rolled on the, the mat. It's just easier to do. And then I just kind of let it unroll as it pulls the mat in and then roll back up as it kind of pushes the mat back out. That way you're not really like having to unroll the whole thing. It's just a lot easier. So let's go ahead and let these cut out. I'll get the pink loaded next and then we can weed everything. Don't want to grow
Now that we have everything weeded out, we can apply the transfer tape. Now you have a couple options on how you apply this. You can either apply this in two separate parts on to the mailbox or you can apply it all at once on to this sheet. So one thing that I like to do, cause like this is one single piece, I'm not even gonna bother with transfer tape on this B because it's literally one single piece of vinyl and it'll be just fine to hand place this because I just don't care. I think it'll be all right and I'm not real worried about it being perfect. Actually, that's pretty good. So I just wanna get any of those little wrinkles out of that and I think that looks pretty decent. But for this piece, I definitely do wanna use transfer tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using StarCraft brand transfer tape. Now I do have like a weird edge on mine because I cut off a few pieces. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just trim that off. You can either stick this to like the side of your table or back on the roll, whatever works for you best just to save it because it's brand new. So I always just like to stick it kind of over on the side of my table. Now what I'm gonna do is roll this out and I just wanna make sure that it's big enough to cover my entire design. That's good. Now it is sticky side up so it's not gonna stick to this just yet. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use my scissors, cut it down. Now it is way taller than it is um, wide. So what I'm gonna do is just use this see-through part and just kind of get an idea of where this needs to sit, just so that I have enough transfer tape on the top and the bottom of the design for it to fit. Now I'm gonna move this over to the side. I'm gonna grab a squeegee and I'm gonna go ahead and burnish this from the back so that it sticks to my transfer tape and then peel off my backing. And sometimes they don't always stick, so you might wanna go a little bit slower than I just did. Once I have that stuck to my big piece of transfer tape, I'm gonna set this over here to the side, and then I'm gonna get my big decal in here and some parchment paper. Parchment paper is gonna help me layer this much easier. Now I just keep like this random big piece kind of hanging around my house. That way I can use it whenever I need to. Now what I wanna do is take the transfer tape logo and I'm gonna put it on to the parchment paper. Now I wanna make sure I have a little tail of the transfer tape that'll stay on to my design when I lay this down because you're gonna kinda line it up using the parchment paper to kinda keep your vinyl from sticking. Once you're happy with where you have it, go ahead and press down right where you have the edge of your vinyl sticking through and then all you're gonna do is pop your parchment paper out. Now it does like to stick a little bit, that's okay, and like you'll see, for whatever reason, this tech wrap likes to stick to the parchment paper a little bit. So you may just need to kind of wiggle it out and then just gently place your letters back on to your transfer tape. This is just the problem I've had with tech wrap. It's not typical, it's totally not usually this bad and occasionally the letters wanna lift, but that's okay, we'll get them down, no worries. Make sure your transfer tape doesn't fold over on itself like mine just did. Ugh. All right, that's good enough. We'll be okay from here. Now I've got a little fold over on my transfer tape, so I am gonna need to peel that off, but I wanted to get the stickers down there, the edge down before I fixed this part because I didn't want it to get all messed up on my letters. So that's pretty good. I do have a piece of my hair stuck in there, but it's fine, no big deal. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and burnish this all down. And then we'll need to go outside to place this on our mailbox. The first thing you're going to want to do when applying this to your mailbox is to clean off your mailbox. I'm just using some sanitizing wipes, but they are 75% alcohol, so they'll work perfectly for this. But you wanna make sure that you give it a really good solid wipe cleaning the entire area that you're gonna place your decal on because you don't want any dirt or debris, and then you wanna let it dry completely. Now, I do put this on a little wonky, but I was trying to do it so that you guys could see. It's totally fine, not a big deal. But what you want to do is place on your decal and then use a squeegee to press your decal down. Now I will say this does show quite a few bubbles, but once I kind of pulled off the transfer tape, I couldn't see those bubbles anymore. So I wanted to make sure to give it a really good burnish and to make sure that everything was down really, really well. There are some folds in the B, which again was probably more so my fault, but this is a little bit of a difficult vinyl to work with. It was really hard to get it to stick to the transfer tape but as you can see it did stick really really well to the mailbox and it was super easy to do so 
I wouldn't worry too much. Now I did have a spot that kind of curled. So what I did was I kind of just uncurled it myself with my hand, which did take a few seconds. So this is a little bit more difficult to work with than a regular vinyl. It really didn't want to say this that stick to that transfer tape, which made it a little harder to get it off the backing. But once I got it off, it was fine and it worked just great. Now you'll notice that the inner circle is not there while placing this decal. That kept wanting to come off, so I eventually just said, oh well, and I'll place it by itself. So I do add that. Now once I put it down, I do go over each of the letters with the squeegee again, just to press out any of those bubbles. You can see quite a few of those in the S right now, and it's really noticeable in the large B. But once you kind of press them out, they go away pretty easily. Now I'm going to show you some of the colors. So this is the orange, and this is in direct sunlight. So they're not super reflective right now, but they will be at night, which you guys will get to see in just a second. But I wanted to show off each of the colors that I have, and I think they're really pretty. So this is it at night, and you can see where it sort of changes that color. You can see where the pink is more of a rainbow, and the green gets more of a rainbow kind of ombre look to it. That is the reflecting working. I think this is a really fun vinyl. I feel like you can do a lot with this. And like I said, while a little bit difficult to work with with the transfer tape, I would use a higher tack transfer tape than what I used. I used medium tack and I would definitely suggest possibly using something in more of the high tack realm. Now I think this came out super cute. It's really fun and it works really, really well. The tech wrap vinyl is fantastic. And don't forget, you can use code Corinne10 to save 10% when you shop their website. Now, if you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments down below. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to subscribe, and as always, happy crafting.